Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. Game of Thrones is one of the most bloodthirsty programs on TV. There are huge battle scenes in every series. The entire continent of Westeros has been embroiled in a harrowing civil war for years, and dozens of main characters have died. And yet, George R. R. Martin is an avowed pacifist. How can this be? Does Game of Thrones glorify war, or is it somehow as pacifist as its author? Let's have a look. My view is that Game of Thrones tries to put forward a brutally honest view of what war is like and what it means, or at least what it is like in a medieval fantasy world. In Westeros, war is dirty, horrific and lacking in all sentiment. The Battle of the Bastards was incredible TV, but it was also harrowing viewing. Whether you lived or died was a matter of blind luck. People were maimed, suffocated and killed, regardless of their station or prowess. Thousands died because of the decisions of a few noble-born characters. The aftermath of wars is even worse. Though we rarely see it on screen, it is clear that battles are often followed by widespread rape and destruction of people's livelihoods. It isn't just the soldiers who are affected by war, it is everyone. Families are ripped apart, lives are trampled underfoot. In season one, Daenerys, when made aware that the Dothraki soldiers are raping their way through a village they have conquered, tries to stop them. One woman she saves challenges her. Saved me, she says. Three of those riders had already raped me before you saved me, girl. I saw my god's house burn, there where I had healed men and women beyond counting. In the streets I saw piles of heads. The head of the baker who makes my bread. The head of a young boy that I had cured a fever just three moons past. So, tell me again what it was that you saved. The woman who says those words, whose life and hope has been ripped from her, is Miri Mazdur. She enacts her own revenge on the Carl who ordered the attack, and Daenerys kills her in return, and the cycle of pain and destruction goes on. This is the genius of Game of Thrones. It does not preach moral messages, it simply shows us the results of decisions by flawed, complex characters and invites us to draw our own conclusions. Perhaps the show asks us all this would be worthwhile if justice or a lasting peace could be achieved as a result of the bloodshed. Rob Stark marches to war to save the lives of his sisters. Daenerys kills thousands in order to free thousands of slaves. But every time the intended goal is not quite achieved. Rob's war ends in betrayal and whenever Danny leaves the city the slave masters rise once more. All of the kings who fought the War of the Five Kings now lie dead, and it's anyone's guess how many of the women who now lead the great houses of Westeros will survive the next round of warfare. In the books, at least, some key characters are starting to realise the futility of war. For example, the Hound is, we think, living the life of the gravedigger on the Quiet Isle, disavowed from violence. In the show, John, who has seen some of the worst of the battles and, let's not forget, was killed by his own men, has grown visibly weary of the endless cycle of misery and destruction. The heroes of Game of Thrones, the real heroes, the ones we root for and applaud their actions, are not the warriors and generals. They are the thinkers and the peacemakers, those who stand up for hope and justice. Samuel Tarly, Davos Seaworth, even Tyrion Lannister, the put upon and the laughed at. This is where the hope for Westeros resides. And so we build to the climax of the series. It is here that we will see the greatest damage caused by the endless wars of the last few years. Winter has come. In Westeros, winters last for years, and wars prevent everyone from growing and gathering the food they need to see themselves through. Crops will not grow, and people will starve and a far greater menace marches towards the wall. Westeros is woefully unprepared for a long winter, let alone an invasion from hordes of the undead. Thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands will die because of the wars that have ravaged the land for so long. How will it end? For years the problems of Westeros have been solved by war, death and destruction, but what if this time they aren't? What if this time the solution is something far less brutal? 
something closer to a peace treaty than a declaration of war. Perhaps then we would appreciate that Game of Thrones does not glorify a war. It vilifies it. It shows it for what it really is. And it offers hope that there might be a better way than the endless cycle of misery and destruction that preceded it. What do you think? Will Game of Thrones end up with an anti-war message? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you want to see more like this one, please click on the subscribe button. And if you want to support the channel in other ways, please check out my Patreon page. Thanks again. That's all for this time. I'll see you again real soon.